The motion to adjourn the House is deemed to have been made and seconded at this time. <clears throat> Therefore, the question is that this House do now adjourn. The Honourable Member for Elmwood, Transcona. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I'm pleased to rise once again to recall some of the events of last fall uh, concerning the uh, strike of Canada's postal workers. I'm sure there are a number of uh, members on the government benches that would, uh, that would be happy to forget about those events and what it meant for workers' rights uh, in Canada, but we here have not forgotten, and in particular, I'm following up on a question that had to do with the suspension of short-term disability benefits for Canada post workers while the rotating strike uh, was uh, happening. Mr. Speaker, and we've had exchanges, a number of exchanges in this House, including late shows like this one before, um, and I think part of where we, you know, the government has been very unapologetic for the fact that Canada Post workers who were on short-term disability had their benefits cut off uh, when, the, uh, when, when the postal workers went out not for a full strike, Mr. Speaker, but for a rotating strike. But those short-term disability, uh, uh, those, those workers who were receiving short-term disability benefits didn't get a, a rotating uh, termination to their short-term disability benefits. They were off of that benefit for the entire time. And so what seems to be the subject of some dispute is, you know, the role of the government in causing that um, that suspension of benefits to occur for those people who are already vulnerable, who are already living on a reduced income, uh, who don't have a way to make up that income. And I want to draw the House's attention, Mr. Speaker, to Section 22 Sub 1 of the Canada Post Corporation Act that says, in the exercise of its powers and the performance of its duties, the corporation shall comply with such directives as the minister may give to it. And that establishes a very clear legal authority for the minister responsible for Canada Post to tell Canada Post management, you guys have the option of suspending those short-term disability benefits, but we think that's wrong and you shouldn't do it. And we're directing you not to do it and to continue making those payments as if the collective agreement were in force. So notwithstanding whatever was happening or not happening at the bargaining table and with the strike, what I'm zeroing in on today, Mr. Speaker, is the fact that I believe and many people across the country believe that it was a wrong and mean-spirited decision by Canada Post Management to suspend those short-term disability benefit payments and that the government uh, at, at the very least was complicit in that decision by not exercising their authority under the Canada Post Corporation Act to tell management to cut it out. And so I'd like to hear somebody from the government side stand tonight and explain to those workers why it was that this government was willing to stand idly by while they were not getting paid their short-term disability insurance when their co-workers were out on a rotating strike and for virtually every day in that strike the mail got delivered in most parts of Canada. There were some service interruptions but these people lost their benefit full-time all the time while the rotating strike was occurring. Why was this government content to stand by and let that happen? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Employment, Workforce Development and Labour. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I know that my colleague and I can certainly agree on the fact that, uh, you know, in the best case scenario, that uh, both sides are able to sit down at the bargaining table and come out with uh, an agreement that is of benefit to, uh, to all. But uh, unfortunately, uh, there are instances that arise where uh, such, is not a, uh, such is not the case and uh, an agreement is elusive and uh, that's when governments have to take action and uh, as we've previously said back to work legislation is a last resort solution uh, and it's something that this government certainly did not take lightly. Uh, we did everything we could to support and encourage Canada Post and the Canadian Union of Postal Workers to reach that negotiated collective agreement. Throughout the process, which had been going on for well over a year, the parties were assisted by federal conciliation officers, mediators, and a special mediator. Alas, despite these efforts, the parties were unable to reach a new agreement. <coughs> As a last resort, the government tabled Bill C-89 uh, in November 22nd of last year. The set, this set out the process 
by which the parties were required to work with an independent mediator arbitrator and the employees would return to work. On November 26, Bill C-89 received royal assent, the rotating strikes ended, and all postal services resumed on November 27. Since Canada Post and Cup W were unable to agree on a mediator arbitrator as per the process outlined in the legislation, our government appointed a former chairperson of the Can Canadian uh, Industrial Relations Board to serve as the mediator arbitrator to assist the parties in reaching a new collective agreement. Mr. S Speaker, it seems to me it, it's, it's worth noting that uh, the, the member across has conveniently forgotten about the many changes our government has brought forward to workers, because this is about workers. We've passed legislation to modernize federal labor standards in this country, which has not been updated since the 1960s. These changes stem from extensive consultations with stakeholders who have told us the same thing time and time again. The way Canadians work has changed, but federal labor standards had not. The modern set of labor standards we have introduced will better protect Canadian workers, especially those who are most vulnerable, such as workers who are in part-time, temporary or low-wage jobs, and it will help set the stage for good quality jobs. This modern set of standards will also help ensure employees in precarious work are paid and treated fairly and have access to labor standards by introducing equal treatment protections. Mr. Speaker, these are just some of the measures that we've taken. These are some, some of the measures that we've uh, taken to uh, respect uh, 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 our approach to labor as a government uh, in developing uh, the, the, the labor laws that are needed for today's workforce, but as well uh, respecting collective bargaining, making sure that uh, uh, Canadian workers are shown the respect and that uh, um, the, the government of Canada is there not to put their thumb on the scale. Thank you. Member for Elmwood, Transcona. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And the, my uh, honourable colleague will know that you know we, we disagree pretty seriously about uh, the way the government chose to handle that particular strike. But my question today has is very specific, and it has to do with the workers on short-term disability that had their benefits cut off for five weeks without any reprieve or break or anything else. And the fact of the matter is, is that the government did have the power to intervene, to tell Canada Post the truth, which was that that was an underhanded bargaining technique. The government is ultimately responsible for that. That's on them for not having done anything about it. And we still haven't heard a justification for it. We've heard excuses. We've heard uh, diversions. Well, they could apply for EI. Well, you know, uh, there was a compassionate program where we cut them off their benefits and then let them reapply for them later. And we say yes to some and no to others. None of those answers have cut it. So this is another opportunity for somebody from this government to get up and explain why it was that they stood by for five weeks while well, vulnerable workers did not receive their short-term disability payments. Why was that? Well, Parliament Minister Secretary of the Minister of Employment. Uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, and again, uh, you know, my colleague across, he, he had started out his initial comments saying that the people on the government side would like to forget uh, th that fall and the, the legislation. In fact, Mr. Speaker, there's one thing that I won't forget was the sanctimony from the NDP when they stood and they, and, and they fought against, uh, you know, it, it's a last solution, a last step uh, solution. But we know that NDP governments have brought in back to work legislation 15 different times. The member from London Fanshawe, Hamilton Centre, the member from Vancouver East, uh, all passing back to work legislation. But Mr. Speaker, the, you know, th this is the one that really gets it for me. Back in 1995, the railway strike in 1995, and I'll read uh, from Hansard. Mr. Speaker, I want to make it clear that though we object to back to work legislation, we think it should be passed in all stages today. The strike has gone on long enough. That was with response to legislation that came to this House in 1995. And you know who said that? This member's father, Mr. Speaker. There is a time, there is a time to bring in back to work legislation and Bill Blake he was a member that I had a huge amount of respect for and he knew at the time and I would uh, encourage his son to maybe have that conversation the honorable member for Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke 